All right. So uh, today we're diving into data engineering mm -hmm. and uh, tackling kind of a weird one. Is SQL Server integration services, you know, SSIS, yeah. actually making a comeback in 2024? I mean, it's over 20 years old. You'd think it would be gone. Not getting more popular. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a strange one. There's this constant push for the newest tech, but sometimes <laughs> the best solutions are the ones that have been working quietly all along. That's SSIS. So this whole deep dive started because I saw these online discussions about wow. SSIS being outdated. One post really stood out. Data expert Kendra Little saying, don't even bother learning SSIS in 2024. Mm -hmm. Then I found this other post. That turned into a whole debate about SSIS. Is it even relevant today? So we've got all those posts and articles today. What do you think started this whole SSIS dead thing? Well, I think in tech, there's always this pull toward the new stuff. It's exciting to learn and try new tools. But sometimes that means we dismiss older technologies too soon without really understanding their strengths and when they still work best. So it's not just about the tech. It's about seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. For example, one argument against learning SSIS is that data engineers should focus on things like LLMs, large language models, but LLMs are changing lots of tech. They're a different skill set from data engineering. So it's not like one replaces the other. Right. It's like thinking if you can use a hammer, you know how to build a house. There's a lot more to it. Data engineering is understanding data flows, transforming data, making sure data is good. These are basic ideas. They haven't really changed, even as the tools change. Right. It's like when you spend weeks trying to make code better yeah. and then a simple driver update. Oh, correct. Get it in the same thing in minutes. Sometimes me isn't better. Exactly. And this is true for the cloud versus on-premises debate, too. The cloud is great for a lot of businesses, especially startups. But companies with older, complex systems often find unexpected costs and complexities when they try to move everything to the cloud. Yeah. One of our sources actually talks about companies moving back from the cloud mm. after realizing it wasn't right for them. It shows that there's no single answer for data engineering. What works for one company might not work for another. And think about data residency laws. They can be a big problem for some organizations. I was reading about that. It seems like a lot of countries, especially in Latin America, don't have the infrastructure for those huge cloud providers. If your data has to stay in a specific place, the cloud might not even be possible. Exactly. You have to consider the whole business when making tech decisions. Sometimes using a tool like SSIS is best, which can be on-premises or hybrid. It's the most practical and cost-effective way. So keeping older systems isn't just about being stuck in the past. It can be a good business decision. Absolutely. The point is, technology should serve the needs of the business, not the other way around. And sometimes that means sticking with what works, even if it's not the newest tech. Okay. I'm starting to see why this SSIS is dead thing is too simple. It's not about whether SSIS is good or bad. It's about knowing when and where it makes sense to use it. And we can't forget... SSIS itself has changed over time. It's not this stuck old tool like some people think. There have been big performance upgrades and new features to handle what modern data integration needs. So it's more than just an old tool trying to stay relevant. Right. SSIS has adapted and works with new technologies, including cloud platforms like Azure. It connects existing infrastructure yeah. with the changing world of data engineering. So we've established SSIS might not be dead after all, but for someone new to data engineering, should they even learn SSIS or should they just focus on the newer cloud tools? That's a great question. And it's one that a lot of new data engineers are asking. It's important to remember that the basics of data engineering are mostly the same, no matter what tools you use. So learning SSIS hmm. could actually give you a really solid foundation, even if you end up using cloud-based tools later. Oh. Absolutely. Understanding those core ideas will make you a more adaptable data engineer. So whether you need to learn SSIS specifically really depends on what kind of jobs and companies you're looking at. If you want to work at startups that are all cloud-based, SIS might not be as useful. But for bigger companies, companies with older systems, knowing SSIS can be a huge advantage. Yeah, I can see that. And it's not just about the technical skills, understanding how businesses work, knowing how to deal with older systems, being able to connect different technologies. Those are all valuable skills, skills that will help you throughout your career. It feels like there's this gap sometimes between what companies say they want in a data engineer and what data engineers actually do. One article we have talks about how job descriptions are full of buzzwords, but then new hires spend most of their time maintaining old systems, not 
building new things. Yeah, it's common. Especially in bigger companies, you might get hired because you're good at a cloud tool like Azure Data Factory, but then you end up working with SSIS most of the time because that's what the company uses. Right. That would be frustrating if you want to work with the newest stuff. Yeah. It's like buying a fancy new car and then being stuck in traffic all the time. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a great analogy. It shows how important it is to be flexible and to understand what data engineers really do. Okay. So we've talked about the cloud versus on-premises debate, the skills gap and the business stuff that affects decisions about technology. But what about SSIS itself? What are its good and bad points? Well, one of SSIS's strengths is it can do a lot of different things, from simple data imports to complex transformations and workflows. It also has a visual interface where you can drag and drop things, and you can write custom code using SQL or .NET languages. So it works for different types of users, people who like visual stuff yeah, and people who like to code. Exactly. Teams can choose what works best for them and for how complex the task is. And that actually leads to a potential weakness. That same flexibility can sometimes make SSIS projects hard to manage and maintain, especially if there's a lot of custom code. It's like choosing between building a house with pre-made parts or making each piece by hand. Both ways can make a nice house but they'll need different kinds of maintenance. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. And the choice depends on things like how big the team is, how much experience they have, how complex the data flows are, and how easy the solution will be to maintain in the long run. We should also talk about data residency laws. These rules are popping up everywhere. Companies have to store data in specific places. How does that affect choosing between SSIS and cloud solutions? Data residency laws are really important. If you're working in a region with strict rules, and cloud providers don't have data centers there, then on-premises or hybrid solutions using tools like SSIS become a lot more attractive. So SSIS could give you more control over where your data is stored and processed? Yes, especially if you need total control over your data environment. Cloud providers offer security features and compliance features, but some organizations, especially those in highly regulated industries like healthcare or finance, they want the level of control. That comes with an on-premises or hybrid setup. It all goes back to the idea that there's no perfect solution in data engineering. It's about understanding the details, the trade-offs, and making good decisions yeah. based on your specific situation. Exactly. And this takes us back to that LinkedIn post that started this whole conversation. Dismissing a technology just because it's old can be a mistake. Yeah. It's easy to get caught up in what's trendy, but as we've been talking about, there's often more to it. The real question is, does the technology solve the problem you have, given your specific situation and limitations? It's about using the right tool for the job, and sometimes. That means recognizing the value of experience and stability. And understanding that experience and stability can come in different ways. For example, even though SSIS is considered an older tool, it's been updated to work with cloud platforms like Azure. It's a bridge between traditional setups and the flexibility of the cloud. So you don't have to choose one or the other. You can use SSIS in a hybrid environment yeah. using both on-premises and cloud resources. Exactly. And this hybrid approach is becoming more and more popular as companies try to balance the good things about the cloud with needing control, security, and compliance. It seems like SSIS is beating the odds. Instead of disappearing, it's adapting and finding new uses in this hybrid world. It shows that good engineering principles and well-designed tools can last a long time. SSIS might not be the most exciting tool in data engineering, but it's still powerful and versatile, especially for organizations with complex systems and those that need to follow data residency laws. It's like that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But maybe a better way to say it is, if it's still working, find ways to make it work even better. I like that. It sums up what we've been talking about. Sometimes the best solutions come from finding creative ways to use what we already have to solve today's problems. So what does all this mean for our listeners? who are trying to figure out data engineering in 2024 and beyond. I think the most important thing is to be adaptable and to have a wide range of skills. Don't just go after the latest trends, learn the fundamentals of data engineering, understand the business side of things, and be open to working with different tools and technologies. So it's about finding that balance. Yeah. Being good at something specific, yeah. but also knowing enough to adapt to different tools. Yeah, and uh, being curious too. Data engineering is always changing. So being curious and wanting to learn new things is really important for doing well in this field. It's funny how we started with a simple question, is SSIS coming back? We ended up talking about so much. The cloud versus on-premises, the skills gap, 
-hmm. get a residency loss. It's been interesting, right? And it shows how all these things are connected. Tech decisions are never made in isolation. They're affected by what businesses need, regulations, security, and the people who actually build and maintain these systems. It reminds us that data engineering is about more than just tools. It's about solving real problems, understanding data, and making data useful for businesses and organizations. And sometimes that means using old and new things together, like we saw with SSIS. Even tech that seems outdated can be useful in the right situation. Yeah, that's a good point. Don't dismiss something just because it's old. Take the time to understand it, its strengths, its weaknesses, yeah. and how it might fit into your whole data system. Exactly. And be willing to question your assumptions. We all have our favorites when it comes to tech, but the best data engineers can put those aside and pick the best tool for the job, even if it's not the newest thing. This deep dive has really changed my mind. I had my own ideas about SSIS, and now I see how versatile it is, how it can adapt, and how it connects older systems with the new world of data engineering. That's great to hear. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. But sometimes the most valuable things are the ones that have been working quietly all along. So to wrap up, I want our listeners to share their experiences. Have you seen cases where an old technology turned out to be really effective? Oops. What things make you choose certain technologies in data? We'd love to hear from you. Data engineering is all about working together and sharing what we know. So keep learning, keep trying new things, and keep questioning how things are done. You might find something amazing in a technology that everyone else has given up on. That's a great point. So we'll end our deep dive here. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, yeah. and keep diving into the amazing world of data.